everyone, welcome back for some zappy testing, some EV charging testing. One of the things that's really bugged me for quite a while is just those little tenths that when I'm charging with the zappy and the conflicts between the eddy, the zappy, the battery and everything else that's going on in the house, the clouds going over and the solar adjusting, all of that mayhem that goes on that these smart devices seem to manage for us, sometimes I get some bouncing, some bouncing between grid draw and grid discharge so some export and import and i really don't like that i don't like those tenths of a kilowatt hour that keep getting consumed and the more charging of the electric cars that i do the more overhead and the more grid draw that i have so i thought i'd do a test today i thought i'd try the difference between using a granny charger which is a fixed kilowatt charging rate that maybe the battery and uh, the solar etc can handle and keep more stable and not bounce but then also test the zappy and see what happens if i make some adjustments to my home storage battery on the amount of balance between grid import and export but also the device charging limitations as well the dvcc charging characteristics i consider max on the victron and therefore controlled how much energy goes into charging the battery versus how much is used for other things. So anyway, let me take you through those settings and what I see and what actually happens with this test and see if it makes sense to you. One, it's a good exercise for me learning about the control that I have and what happens with the charging. But anyway, you'll see as I go along and hopefully it makes sense and hopefully there's something to learn and share along the way. Let's start with some basics and start to make clear what's actually shown here on the screen. So the bottom row are the modes for my Zappy and Eddy. This is Home Assistant, but it links in via an API to the My Energy servers and can control the mode, whether it's fast, eco, eco plus for the Zappy or in stop mode or normal mode for the Eddy. Next row up, these are the counters for the Eddy and Zappy, showing how many kilowatt hours we've put into the various devices. 1.31 kilowatt hours has gone into the Zappy today, and 0 0.03 kilowatt hours into the Eddy so far. Going up a row to the dials, that's showing the amount of export going out to the grid on the far right hand side and the one the hand is pointing to, import. That's what I'm interested in, the extra tenths of a kilowatt hour that are coming in from the grid. So at the moment that's showing 58 watt hours, which is nice and low, but I want to see whether that increases at all. This is coming from the solar edge inverter and doesn't update very often, so it's not as dynamic as the numbers are above. Then on the left hand side we've got solar today, that's total solar for all three arrays that we've got, that's coming from the My Energy servers, and we've got solar edge as well, that's just the amount of solar energy from the one 2 kilowatt inverter, the solar edge inverter. The next row up are current and live monitors of kilowatts being used by the Zappy on the left hand side, then the Eddy, then our air conditioning units which is zero, and the oven and hob which will hopefully stay at zero as well, so it's just the Eddy we're looking at on that line. Next row up is the Mixergy tank, our hot water tank, so we'll just ignore that row completely. Okay, next row up, this is the critical one. This is the dynamic data that's coming out of the Victron inverter. So Home Assistant is connected directly to the Victron inverter and is getting this live from the Victron inverter that's managing our battery. The really good thing about this data is not just that it's live, but the refresh rate is just a couple of seconds, so you really can see dynamically what's going on. Starting from the right hand side, AC loads, that's the amount of AC power we're using in the house. VPV power, that's PV, that's solar power, so that's how much we're generating right now, 1.9 kilowatts. V battery power, if it's positive like this at 293 watts, then that's the amount we're charging the battery. If it goes negative, we're discharging the battery. The same for V grid power, that's the amount going out to the grid at the moment, minus 12 watts, we're exporting 12 watts. If it goes positive, we're bringing it in, 21 watts there from the grid. A quick scroll down to have a look at the Zappy and Eddy modes. Yep, the Zappy is in Eco and the Eddy is in Normal. Okay, this is the first part of the test. So we've got a granny charger plugged in. It's set to 10 amps. So 10 amps times 240 volts, that's 2.4 kilowatts. And that's roughly what you can see on the AC loads, 2.4. That does include the house load, so there's a little bit of fluctuation going on. But note there's no zappy power because we're using the granny cable plugged into a three-pin socket. 
the thing that I'm interested in is whether we're exporting or importing. So negative number, we are exporting. And it's nice and sta steady, isn't it? 31, 37 watts. We're not importing from the grid. For those that know the MyEnergy Zappi, I've got export limit set to 200 watts. So it should, if it was on the Zappi, be putting out 200 watts to the grid. But because I'm on a granny charger, I'm not. So I'm relying on this setting for the Victron inverter, which is currently set to 40 watts export. So my balance to zero, trying not to import and trying to export, I've got it balanced to 40 watts of export. So looking at the PV data, VPV power, we're producing, generating two kilowatts of power, but we're actually using 2.4 kilowatts because it's a fixed load on the granny charger. So 450 watts at the moment is coming out of the battery. So that's the only thing that's balancing. The battery is balancing to the grid and to the loads. And it seems to be doing a decent job. It's keeping reasonably steady. So the power from solar is obviously going up and down slightly, but today it's quite a cloudy day and We've got some consistency, um, so we're not going bright sunshine, then cloud. So the PV power is staying quite reasonable between 1900 and something and 2000 at the moment. So the battery draw is staying reasonably steady, fluctuating a few watts here and there. And the grid export as well is fluctuating within a small margin. So it's good because it's not going to import. So, so far, my import SE number is not going up, which is great news. So this looks like a really efficient way of charging uh, your electric car using a granny charger. Moving on to the next part of the test, we've now set the Zappi into eco mode. So not eco plus plus, just eco mode. So it's going to continually power the charger at 1.4 kilowatts roughly and keep that as a minimum. If there's more excess solar energy, so the Zappi can see export going to the grid, then it will increase the amount of charge that it's got and use that extra energy that is currently being exported. So the Zappi's watching for the V grid power to go above minus 200, and then it grabs some resource and increases the charge rate. While that's going on, the battery which is currently charging at 304 watts, is looking at exactly the same, the V grid power, and looking to see when it's above, or, or below, shall we say, minus 40. And then it's going to try and increase the charging power or reduce it, depending on what it sees on its value. So the battery comes first in priority because it's set to minus 40. The Zappi comes second because it's set to minus 200. So those export limits are handling the priorities of who gets what. But what we can see going on here is one minute it's minus 100, the next it's plus, well, plus five at the moment, uh, minus 48. So it's fluctuating more than what it was. And this seems to be the issue that there's a conflict between the battery fighting for the extra export energy and the Zappi trying to fight for it. And it seems to happen quite a lot, especially when it's down at that minimum level that we've got this situation right now. There is another factor to consider, and that's the limit that I set on V battery power, the amount of charging that the Victron inverter will do. I can set that as a limit in the DVCC settings. I can set the maximum amps that the Victron inverter will charge the batteries at. So if there's any more spare resource above what I'm currently charging at, then it won't use it for charging the battery, hence it will make it available to the Zappi. So here I go, I'm going down in Home Assistant and I've got some buttons here with some preset levels of DVCC. And I'm going to set the 2 amp button. 2 amps on a 48 volt battery configuration, that's going to be 100 watts of charging. The idea being that I'm going to put as least amount of solar energy towards battery charging and put as much as I can towards the Zappi so there's less contention going on. That's the purpose of just doing this test. That seems to be having the desired effect. We've got a little more grid export going on uh, at the 200 watts. So remember, the Zappi is not going to grab it because it wants to leave 200 watts available. But the battery charging is down to 174, 164 watts now. So I've reduced the amount of energy going into the battery and I've made more available to the Zappi. But it's not quite using it yet because we're definitely exporting to the grid at the export limit that the Zappi is leaving. Are you still with me? Are you keeping up? Does this make sense about the export limits and the minus 40 watts and the charging limits? So things are looking a little bit different now. We've got a little bit more solar energy at 2 kilowatts. The 
AC loads are at 1.6 kilowatts, so we've got some spare energy, but I've limited what we can use into the battery, so there's no contention with the battery charging, and hence we've got some export. So at the moment it's nice and steady, and we're exporting more, and everything's looking good. So now we've found a balance, we've got a balance to what's going on. If PV power goes up, then hopefully just the zappy will go up on its own. And what I'm interested in is will the zappy bounce from export to import, etc. at this point, or will it not? Now that I've almost removed the contention for the battery. If PV power reduces though, and I've got less generation, then we'll have to start using more from the battery. So instead of charging the battery, then it'll have to discharge from the battery. So then you'll have some contention. OK, let's go back to those DVCC settings and click on the 4 amp button. So now it's 4 times 50, 200 watts. Now what I'd hope for is that the battery would respond immediately and start charging more because there's 227 watts going out to the grid and I've got minus 40 set on the battery. So that should be at least 160 watts available to increase charging to the battery. But it's not. It's staying at around 119, 120 and it's going to increase more slowly. And I'm really not quite sure why it's doing that. Maybe it's because the PV power is now up to 2.2 kilowatts. The Zappy is charging it now 1.7 kilowatts. So we're ahead of the minimum of 1.4. So maybe it's something to do with that, but we're still exporting 230 watts. Why is that when I've asked for more battery charging at four amps? Anyway, here it goes. It's now starting to increase. 164 watts going into the battery. So it is taking its time to balance and get these adjustments with priorities right. So far, we're still exporting 200 watts. So again, that setting of the four amps hasn't quite given the result I want instantaneously, but as you can see, it's slowly getting there, 174 watts. To me, this looks like the Zappy is actually getting priority, even though the grid export limits that I've got set should mean that the battery gets first priority, but it looks like the Zappy is getting in occasionally. So maybe the battery is a little bit slower in responding than the Zappy. I'm not quite sure, but I'm learning here about the balance between the two. One potential reason for this is maybe the monitoring of the grid isn't as accurate with either the battery or the Zappy. For example, on the My Energy app, the grid import and export is never as accurate as other ways of monitoring it. So maybe the Zappy thinks it can respond or is working based on one number of grid export, whereas the battery is working on the other. Perhaps I need a wider margin between the two that takes into account any inaccuracy with the CT monitoring that the Zappy is doing. Anyway, what I'm achieving here is I'm charging on the Zappy in eco mode and I'm not bouncing into grid import. So my grid import is not going up. This is exactly what I want. And it appears that I can do it by limiting what energy is going into the battery. So what I'm obviously going to do now is try to increase the amount of energy that goes into the battery to see if we get that bouncing. So scrolling back down to my DVCC buttons, and I'm going to select the next one, which is 5 amps. So it's only a 50 watt increase from 200 watts to 250 watts. But let's see whether that makes any difference. So this is all in real time with a screen recording of what I'm watching. So what I'm looking at now is the grid power, which is minus 202 watts, and the V battery power, how much we're charging, 174 watts. I want to see if this increases and goes more towards the 250 watts. So let's, uh, let's let this play out and just have a look. So V battery power, the amount we're charging into the battery has increased above 200 watts. But the thing that's changing is AC loads going from 1705 to 1831, 1842. So we're, we've added over 100 watts and now it's reduced again. So something's fluctuating on that 100 watts. That, I think, is actually the zappy. The information below on the Zappi power at 1657, that's not fluctuating because it's not updating regularly enough. So I'm not seeing that dynamic change. I wonder if it's possible to put a Shelly sensor onto the circuit that's feeding the Zappi. And then I could see live information about how much power is going into the Zappi. I wonder if that's possible. 
Right, so yes, the battery is now charging at about 250 watts, so we've met that target of the 5 amps. So let's just scroll down and make sure that the values are set to 5 amps. And yes, it is. And also minus 40 watts is the set point for the Victron inverter. So minus 40 watts and 5 amps is correct. So let's now change it. Let's increase the amount we're allowed to charge the battery up to 500 watts. So that'll be 10 amps. So if there's any excess energy above the default Zappi setting of 1.4 kilowatts in eco mode, then we should see that start to move towards battery charging in V bat power. So yep, 274, 374 watts. It's increasing, going in the right direction. AC loads went down momentarily to 1684. That's meaning that the Zappi is reducing in its charging. Battery charging is up to 419. It's heading and reacting faster this time to the 500 watts. So yeah, battery charging is getting close to the 500 watts now. Zappi has come down in charging rates to 1500. It's reacting how we want. But I'd like to see what happens when the Zappi is trying to maintain the minimum level of charge at 1.4 kilowatts. So let's change DVCC again and put 750 watts as the maximum battery charging. So battery charging should start to increase, and it is, 564 watts now. And then gradually the AC loads will come down more to the bottom level of 1400 watts. So yep, battery charging, 644, 1428 for the AC load. Have a look at grid power now though. Now we're getting to the situation where I think we're going to start to see this bouncing. And yes, there it is, the 37 watts of import were just imported some energy from the grid. The Zappi at 1366 watts, we're obviously continuing to provide the power from the Zappi because it's in eco mode, not eco plus. And we've set 750 watts for battery charging, but we're not achieving it. We don't have enough energy to do that charging and run the Zappi at the minimum level. So if we were in eco plus mode, then it would obviously time out. Because we're in eco mode, it's not timing out. And now the battery itself is having to adjust how much charge is going in or how much we're discharging etc depending on how much available solar there is and in this situation it is bouncing around we are importing from the grid where previously when i had a lower rate for the battery charging on dvcc we had more available energy to provide for the zappy and it wasn't bouncing off this bottom level of 1360 1400 watts so yeah i'm learning here that there are ways in which I can force a little bit more export and control things and not have this bouncing around in the grid import. Let's make another change. Let's change the Zappi into fast mode. So if the car allows it, it will charge up to 7.2 kilowatts in this mode. The Golf is actually set with a limit of, I think it's 10 amps. So 10 amps at 240, 2.4 kilowatts. That's what we're going to see. Yep, we've got some grid import now, though, because where's it getting the extra energy? It's suddenly using more with the Zappi charger. It's having to bring that in from the grid, and now the battery is going to adjust and start to discharge from the battery to free up some energy so that we don't actually import from the grid. But as you can see, it's not lightning fast. It's not happening instantly. And those changes, that's where you get these tenths of a kilowatt hour. So mucking around and changing like I've just done, that's what causes grid import. If you leave things alone, leave it stable and try to keep consistent amounts of power usage, then things won't have to fight between each other and it won't have to keep changing. And all you've got to contend with is weather when clouds come over and the amount of PV generation changes. But from this test and going back right to the beginning at what we saw with the granny charger charging, that was definitely not using any grid import. So for me, the most efficient way of charging without using any grid import to avoid these tenths is either to use a fixed rate charge, i.e. a granny charger, or to have it in a mode where the Zappi is actually adjusting according to solar lows and using that 100 or 200 watt export margin that you can set, in which case, if it's exporting, it won't be importing. I hope you enjoyed this insight into my data watching and how I go about testing things and uh, how I analyse whether a granny charger is better to use than the Zappi in these various modes. Let me know in the comments, how do you charge your electric car? And do you see this issue where you lose tenths and you're having grid import? And uh, have you found an optimum? Let me know in the comments, really would appreciate it. 
Hope you enjoyed this video. Take care. More videos to come soon. Just thought I'd share this one because it was interesting. Bye for now.